Hey guys, this will be the first part of my um, basics game maker two. In this one, we're just gonna go through some basics for objects, rooms, and so forth. Just kind of get a feel of what game maker is and how it works. So I set up this. Uh, let's 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 first go to file, new project. Let's make it a game maker language project. I'll you can call it whatever. I'll call this one testing uh, or tutorial one. No. All, All right, right. So this is what a blank project looks like. <laughs> You're given nothing much, but you do have a room. The room. Um, what the room is in Game Maker is kind of, you can think of it like the game window. It's not technically, but it's the area where you'll be putting all of your objects, uh, running all of your code. It's it's where, it's like the game area, the game space. Um, so what you can do here is you have two layers by default. You can make more if you want, but it's the, an instances layer and a background layer. Instances, any instance layer will let you put objects down. Create instances of an object, and we'll get into what that is later. But uh, yeah. And then the background layer, which just sets a static image for the background. And you can set the depth for it, the animation speed. There's some other things you can set here. There, if you just want it to be a plain color, I could set, right now it's black, but I could set uh, to be green. Like a green screen if I wanted to or something more orange let's set it to like a nice yellow a nice pastel yellow that looks good all right now we have this game room um, also by default the game window is the size of the game room so if I go down here and I see I have my window size I can change it to something like 200 by 100 which is really small and if I ran that and above here you have all these things uh, debug run stop run runs the current project it runs the game that you've made so far so if we run it all that will happen is you'll see it's just rendering our room which is just a yellow background nothing going on yet <laughs> that's fine all right, so when you make objects, you want to give them a name that's descriptive. Typically, they have prefixes like this. So I'll name this R testing. And you notice that I put the R underscore as a prefix to testing. That will denote, uh, denote to our game, or to us, the reader, or the person working on this, that uh, it is a room. So R underscore I know now is a room. And I'll name all my rooms like this. That's a good naming convention to get into the habit of. Uh, on the other hand, if I make an object, and uh, what objects are, an object is a thing in Game Maker. So if you had a chair and you need to have properties, like say you need the chair to keep track of how many legs it has, you need the chair to keep track of what color it is, so forth, you would create an object. and Maybe call it O chair or something like that. So let's do that. Let's create an object. And we'll call it user naming convention for objects. It should be like O underscore. So O underscore chair. And now you're brought to this window, your workspace, where you're going to see uh, the name of it, the sprite. And we don't have a sprite set, but a sprite is basically just an image. It's an image that you can attach to an object or there's a lot of other things you can do with the sprite, but um, you can have an image on the sprite, or you can have a sprite on an object. A collision mask, and usually the default collision mask, see it says same as sprite, is the collision mask of the sprite. And what collision mask is, is it's a box or another shape that checks against collision with other boxes. So it's, a, it's like a shape that you can use to check against collision or in, uh, interlapping um, 
with other objects or collision boxes. And we'll get into that later. Uh, visible, if you have this set to false, it will not render the sprite once you have it in the room. Solid and physics, these are for the game maker physics system, which I probably won't be covering in this tutorial. Um, the end game physics system can be useful, but for our purposes, uh, we'll just ignore that for now. There is a there's a good documentation on that physics system. You guys can look up. Uh, persistent means that it will um, so I, when you create an object in a room, every time you open that room, it creates all the objects and resets them to what they were. It will reset all the objects every time you create it. Every time you leave a room, it destroys that room. <laughs> So persistent means that it will carry through to every room and it will keep all of its values. So if your chair only had two legs by the end of the first room, you can go to the next room. And also, um, you can make multiple rooms. You can also think of rooms as levels. So I can make one room called level one, the second room called level two, and so forth, if I wanted to design my game like that. Um, so, uh, yeah. Next up, the thing we want to talk about is parent, or events. Uh, then objects are made up of events. The two most important are probably create, step, and draw. The create event, it runs everything, all the code that you put in this box here. It will run all of this code the first time, or uh, when the instance is created. So if I created an instance, by the way, instances and objects are different. Oh, chair, this is an object. And it's an object is like a template or a prototype. And uh, what it does is you can create instances of that object. So if I had five chairs, I would have, if I put five chairs in the room, I would have five chair instances. An instance is just an object that has been created and put somewhere in the room at some point. <laughs> So, um, so the create event, once this, the instance of OChair has been created, uh, it will run all of the code within create. And then step, once, what step does is once every step, this code will be run. And what a step is, it's kind of like a frame. So right now, the default in GameMaker is you'll have 30 steps per second. It will try to run 30 frames per second. Now the actual frames per second will be a lot longer, um, but code will only be ran in steps. So uh, it will. This will. The step event will probably run by default 30 times a second. So the step will run once every frame. Um, the draw event is where everything is rendered. So by default, when you don't have a draw event, there is a hidden draw event that's just drawing the object. Once you create the draw object, it uh, draw event, it replaces that. So you're gonna have to, if you want the object to be drawn to the screen, you're gonna have to put draw self, just a hint. Um, if you don't put this, if you create a draw event and you don't put this here, when you put the object in the room, it will not be drawn. Sometimes you don't want an object to be drawn. Uh, and that's fine, but if you do, then you're going to need to do this. Uh, so let's talk about variables, and then we'll put some objects in the room. First, actually, let's make a sprite. We'll call this sprite. We'll use a naming convention for sprites. So let's do SPR underscore sprite chair. Now, GameMaker Studio does come with a default uh, image editor. It's I don't, it's not that great, but you can use it if you want. You can also use any other um, image editor or paint tool to create whatever sprite you want, and then you can just import it from there. But we'll, for the purposes of right now, we'll just create a sprite from this menu. Let's go ahead and make it brown. And this is a chair. Looks good. All right. 
And now we can set that chair sprite to a sprite on our object. Sprites, chair. Looks great. And now we can in the create event. Let's talk about some variables. So what a variable is, is just a, a storage space that stores data. So a data can be, is just information. So data could be a number, it could be a decimal number, it could be a negative number, you know, anything like that. It could also be text like hello. And remember text um, in Game Maker in most programming languages uh, is always put in between quotation marks. You can also do single quotes. At, uh, so hello equals hello. Oh, you can't do single quotes. I take it back. Yeah, they don't recognize single quotes. So double quotation marks for, for strings and text. And so if you wanted this variable, we called hello. If you wanted to store the text hello, you could do like this, double quotation marks hello. <laughs> Now, um, a variable will store data, and then we use the equal sign, or we call it in programming the assignment operator, to store that information. So let's make a variable called legs. We'll keep track of how many legs a chair has. We use the assignment operator, and what it does is it takes whatever's on the right side of the assignment operator and puts it into the left side. So if we did four legs, uh, then that means legs is now four. Right, and we can test this out. What we could do is show message. And this is a function, we'll get into functions later, but this is a function that what it does is it will show whatever you put between these two parentheses, it will show that information to the screen in a little pop up box. And usually, typically, this um, function is used for like bug testing, but it will work for our. For our needs right now just to test some stuff out to teach for teaching purposes so show message legs and what i expect this to do is because we're in the create event once i put this chair in the room uh it will as soon as it creates the chair like the game uh, the room starts the game starts and as soon as it creates the chair this will run once and it will show us that we have four legs we'll I'll just show us four because legs is four right so let's see. First, let's put this chair in there. Ooh, we're on the wrong layer. You can't put instances on a background layer. So let's go to instances, put that chair in there somewhere, and let's press play. So it showed us four. That's what we wanted, expected. And then it shows us our little chair. Object being drawn to the screen. Very good. All right. So, uh, next up, let's talk about scope. So we learned how to create a variable. And when you create a variable like this that has no prefix, it means that the scope of it is global to the object. So we have four scopes, typically, for four variable types. We have local variables, so if I do var legs, equals four, that'll be local. If I did global dot legs, equals four, that would be global to the entire game. If I just did legs equals four, that would be global to the object. And these are all um, declarations. So the first time you ever call a variable, it will decide what kind of variable it is. Uh, and you don't have to use the var prefix. So if I said var legs equals four, five right weird five-legged chair and um i want to call it again i wouldn't say var legs again because i would just be re-establishing var legs i would be recreating the variable i don't want to be doing that so it would be just legs so i could just show message legs oh very good and uh, <clears throat> so what scope is, is if it's a local scope, once the create event is over, this var legs will be destroyed. You can't reference it anymore. 
the only time it could ever be referenced is within this event, which is, that's good because uh, it will get rid of that information. Whenever you make a variable, you're creating a little bit of space that you need to allocate in memory and RAM. Um, so the less of that, the better, because you don't want your game getting really big. Um, so if I did var legs equals five, and I went to the step event, and I try to sh say like show message, I want to know what's in legs. So what do you think will happen here? I accidentally did debug. But as you can see, it gave us an error. Uh, variable O chair legs, not set for reading it. All right. So what that means is basically, basically, uh, we we set we put a var before legs, so we've decided, hey, this is a local variable. And when we try to call it step, step doesn't know what legs is because it only knows what things that are defined in step or global variables are. So uh, it, it it wouldn't know this. So instead, you could do equal. In the declaration of this variable, you can just do legs equals five, and that will be telling Myler GameMaker that um, this is global to the object. So if I were to go back here and show message legs and step, every member, because uh, legs will run once, or step will run once per frame, this should show us a bunch of times every time I click it. Uh, Five, 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 forever. <laughs> All right. So that's if you want something global to the entire object. Um, that's how you do that. Well, what if you want something that's there's one variable like this. So if, if I have one variable, let's call it player health, right? And I need all objects when they deal with player health to be dealing with the same variable. Um, well, this wouldn't work. Legs equals five wouldn't work because this is only global to this object. So if I create a separate object and I call this or desk, and then I need a desk sprite. Uh, can I run? I can't find anything. Sorry, my cats. Uh, let's make a desk. Good enough for our purposes. So if we go back here, oh, I forgot my naming convention. Oh, desk. For object? And then for the chair? Or for the desk, sprite, we go SPR underscore desk. Very good. All right. And then let's set that to desk like we did before. So if I had this and I wanted to check create and I want to be like, okay, so we made legs in the other variable, the other objects. Let's check legs, show message legs. Put that desk in the room. Let's move this side over so we can see the desk. And we ran it. Ooh, ooh we got a very uh, we got an error. Uh, desk not set before reading it. All right, that's because remember that when you initialize a variable like this, where there's no prefix that it will be global, but only to the object. This is only global to the instance uh, that you create, right? Um, so what if we wanted a variable that when anyone calls it, it's always the same variable. So if we do like global dot health, like for some reason we wanna keep the, uh, let's do global dot Yeah, let's go with health. For some reason, if we wanted to keep, we wouldn't want to do this. We wouldn't want to keep track of the player health inside of a chair object. But uh, let's initialize that to five or to ten. 
now when I call global dot health in here it's hard to run this oh health is a okay so this is a good see I screwed up here this is perfect health is a built-in variable and you can't redefine built-in variables like this um, there is some other built-in variable. Health is built-in. Uh, there's some other ones. X and Y are built-in. And they keep track of the X and Y coordinate of the object that you're calling it from. Uh, image angle is built-in. Uh, image X scale is built-in. Things that are like in-game built-in game maker variables, you can't redefine like this. So let's call this... Uh, Player health. Let's make it 10. So if we call player health, and the reason why I do this is called camel casing. And with normal variables, I typically camel case. And that's when um, the first word is under, uh, first word on uh, lowercase, and then every word after that is uppercase. Uh, something also to watch out for is that game maker and most programming languages are case sensitive. So if I have legs equals five, and then I put legs with an uppercase equals five, these are two different variables. It, well, if I made this six, these are two different variables. One containing six, one containing five, because this one has capital L and the other one doesn't. Game maker will consider these two different variables. So make sure that you're always watching out for your capitalizations. <laughs> All right, so if I did this, on desk, it should now show us what player health is. Yeah, it's 10. Oh, and then I forgot to get rid of that bit. Let's stop it from showing legs every step. All right, so that's global and uh, global, totally global and global to the object. And then there's a third type that we talked about earlier, which is local. If I have local color, remember that only this event, once you initialize this, only this event will know about color. And once color is done, or once uh, the event is done, once the create event is finished, this variable will be destroyed. All right. So, um, another thing about variables is the only way to change them is at some point you must use or at some point in the code there must be an assignment operator so if i want to add one to legs if i wanted this chair suddenly to be um six legs well you you might think all right what if i just do legs plus one this will be it this will show an error what's the error i'll already tell you right here Unnecessary upper expression legs used as a statement. So what's happening here is I get legs, which is five plus one. So this will be six and this will just be six. This will become six and just stay here and nothing will happen. We, legs will still be five and it will just show six right here and it won't do anything. Um, how you actually change legs plus one is you can go legs equals legs plus one. All right, that's pretty good. So legs plus one, so legs is five, so, so this will, legs will become five, and then plus one, so this will become six, so it does everything on the right side first, and then because of the assignment operator, we're gonna store whatever's on the right side into the left, so legs will become six, so we've successfully added one to legs. Another way, easy, an easy shorthand thing to do is legs plus equals, this will just add whatever's ever on the right to whatever is on the left and store it there, so that plus equals one, that's the same effect. Or legs plus plus, we'll just add one to it. Legs minus minus will also do the same thing. You can also do uh, legs minus equals two or whatever, and that will just subtract whatever's on the right to whatever's on the left and store it in the left. So legs will become three. All right. So those are some things to remember. And I know I'm going pretty fast, but you can always pause the video and go back and do some testing on your own, test out some of this stuff. 
Um, remember that you can always use the show message to uh, show a variable if you if you want to test some things out or do whatever. So um, some built-in variables, oh, some really important ones for objects, the, probably the most important built-in variables are x and y. These are the x and y coordinates for the object on the screen. So if I wanted, for instance, oh, something I have to explain is the room isn't built in a normal Cartesian grid system. In, in math class, you probably learned that if you want to go right, you add to x, left, you uh, subtract from x, and that's still true here, but the y-axis is different. Normal math, when you go up, you add to y, go down, you subtract from y. It's different here. When you go down, you add to y. When you go right, you add to x. So uh, if I'm down here, you see on the bottom left, you can see these uh, numbers that show me where I am in the coordinates of the room. If I'm down here, you can see that uh, the y variable is, or the y coordinate is, is super high. And if I go all the way up, the y coordinate becomes really low. And the highest for both x and y would be on the bottom right. And 0, 0 is on the top left. <laughs> All right, so that's important to note. So let's say that I wanted to move the chair to the right. Uh, let's say I wanted to move it, I don't know, half, half or 0 0.1 pixels every frame or every step. So I could do x plus equals, because remember plus equals adds whatever is on the right to whatever is on the left and then stores it in the whatever on the left. Plus equals 0 0.1. So we're moving 0 0.1 pixels because um, x is only represented as pixels typically. Uh, so let's test this out. What do you think will happen? Ooh, we got an error. What is that error? Cold Brown player health. Let's say, oh, I deleted the player health. And then I forgot to delete it from the other object too before reading it. So that's something to watch out for, definitely. So see, I'm showing a message, but I never defined this global.player health. I never initialized it, so it doesn't know what to do with it. Let's delete that and then play again. It should be good now. You see the chair is moving very slowly to the right. And now it's <laughs> defying physics and going through the desk. I guess you can think of it as like being next to the desk. And now it's off on its way into the void. Bye chair. And that's all I really wanted to cover for now. Um, if you have any questions, of course you can ask. Anything you're not sure on or want more examples, uh, feel free to DM me, I'll answer it. Any and all PMs or DMs and no question is dumb. Uh, all questions are valid. You can ask me whatever you want and I'll give you a straightforward answer. Um, I'm not like uh, an expert in Game Maker. Uh, so if you, if you saw that I did something wrong or you saw that I didn't explain something well enough, please comment below and let me know or send me a message, whatever you would like. Um, all right, that's about it. Thank you guys.